So this video is a little bit longer um, on using the unit normal table. And I just want to note that this table, so for Psych 42 and 144, I didn't make my own table. And so um, the one that I used has uh, leading zeros. And there shouldn't be leading zeros because it's a proportion. So I, I want to be consistent with what I'm teaching you. Um, I just added the pictures to them. So the idea behind the unit normal table is that we can calculate a z-score and then using column A, which is where we look for our z-score, um, we can estimate probability of randomly selecting various scores. So the B, um, column B is when we look for the body and that's when we have more than half of the distribution that we're looking for on one side. The tail is when we're looking for just the tail on one side. Um, and then we can also look from the mean to Z. So imagine procrastination is normally distributed in the population of Fresno State undergrads and you want to know the probability of randomly selecting someone with a 90 or lower. So our first step is that we need to calculate the Z-score for 90 because that's not one of our, um, our one, two, three standard deviations that we can, we can use. So we need to calculate the z-score and we take our score minus the population mean, so 90 minus 70, divided by our population standard deviation, which equals 2.86. So this is our z-score for 90. I always recommend drawing it out because it helps you to visualize where that falls on this graph. And so now if I'm looking for lower, 90 or lower, then I'm looking for this area. So I would shade in the area that I'm looking for. So that's a big part of it. You would expect it to be pretty a pretty big probability that we would get a score that falls um, 90 or lower. So here, we want to look for that in our unit normal table. So 2.86 is our z-score. Um, these sideways equal signs just indicate that there's a break in the table um, because I, I don't have room to show you the entire table. So you can see here that we're looking for 2.86. We just look in all of our A column, um, our A columns, our Z-score columns until we find it. And there it is, 2.86. And because we are looking in the body, because we have the majority of the unit normal table, um, we're looking here at this 0.9978. So what we've just discovered is that about 0.9978 um, of this entire distribution would fall below 90. Uh, now, if we were to make this a percent, we could move over our decimal point to um, two numbers to the right, and that would be a 99.78. So almost 100% just under 100% of scores are gonna fall below that score. Now, imagine that we're looking for 90 or higher. It changes the direction that we're looking in in our unit normal table. So again, it helps to draw this out and be able to visualize that you're just looking for that small amount of it. So we're looking for the same z-score here, but now we're looking in the tail, which is right there. And you'll notice that if you add the body and tail together, you get 100% or one since we're looking at proportions. So the answer to that question would be 0 0.0022, or if you were writing it out as a percentage, that would be 0.22%. We could also look at um, randoming somebody, randomly selecting someone with a score between the mean and 90. Oops. I've got some weird animation here. Calculate the z-score for 90. We have that, that's what we've been using, the 2.86. We're gonna draw it out. We're looking at the same score, but now we're actually looking from the mean to the score. So we're no longer going to include this half that we are not shading this time. So we're looking from 70 to 90. Um, so we will use the unit normal table again, same place. We're going to look at 2.86. And then here, we're looking at column D. So we're looking at this mean to Z, or mean and Z. So it's 0.4978, or 49.78%. Now, you should note that this 0.4978 is only, um, it's 0.5 exactly less than the body. And that's because we're taking out that half, that 0.5 of the distribution when we look for just the mean to Z. 
So now I'm going to show the example that those of you in class really don't like, um, where we have to calculate two z-scores and look for the distance between them. There's two ways to do it. So we're going to calculate, um, we're going to look at the probability of randomly selecting someone with a score between 80 and 90. So here we need to calculate our z-score for 80, which is 1.42. We need to calculate the z-score for 90, which is 2.86. And again, you want to draw it out. And this is where our two z-scores fall. So the idea is that we're now looking for the area under the curve that falls between these two z-scores. So we can't use just one spot on the unit normal table. We need to look at two z-scores and do some calculations. So there's two different ways to do this. The first way is that you use the mean to z column. So you can see in this first graph that I'm looking for the score that is most extreme, mean to z, which was my R90. So that's a z-score of 2.86. And then I'm subtracting the mean to z for the less extreme score. So our original mean to z for 90 was 0.4978. That's what we already calculated. And then the mean to z for the, um, for the other, for the less extreme z-score, 1.42, is 0.4222. So now we have two different areas that we've calculated. So here, what you're seeing is that we're, if we look at both of them together, we're just taking out this part of the curve. So we're subtracting that which is this right here. We're subtracting that from this area. And that will leave us with the area that we're actually interested in. Because the area that we're actually interested in is this right here, is the difference between those two. So that gives us 0.4978 minus 0.4222, and that's gonna be equal to 0 0.0756 or 7.56%. So that's one method. The other method, this is the way that I do it. I think it's it's easy for me, um, but it might work better for you to use the body column and it works the exact same way. So the idea is then that you're looking for the body um, and then you're subtracting the smaller portion of the body from that and you get the exact same, or the same answer of 7.56%. So that is how you use the unit normal table. And then the next video is going to talk about sampling distributions.